What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be today. I am excited to be with my friend Chip, and we got a, we got a whole entourage in the house. Some seriously good-looking people, except Charles Woods, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, this morning, I want to say hello to my friend Chip Baker. Chip, how are you doing today, my brother? I'm great, Matt. Thanks so much for, for having me and the guys on. Truly appreciate you. I truly appreciate all you do and how you do. And so just grateful for the opportunity and always a blessing uh, to connect with you. And, you know, I know it's always going to be a good time. Yeah, it is, man. We always have a good time. And it's been, uh, I don't know when the last time that uh, we did the show together. It's been over a year, I'm sure, since the last, a lot has happened since that, uh, that last time. There was no coronavirus. Well, well, there kind of was. There wasn't the epidemic, I guess, you know, yep. when we were talking. Uh, there was no um, the impact of influence that we're going to be talking about. Now, there was an impact of influence, but now it's all gathered together on some pages. Uh, <laughs> and there's been all kinds of stuff been going on. Now, uh, obviously, right now, as we're speaking, there has been some, some bad weather here in the United States. And yeah. um, some storms have come through the Texas area. And a lot of folks are, are struggling with that. that. Texas isn't prepared for winter blizzards and storms. And uh, power outages, freezing cold weather. Uh, it was actually colder in in uh, Dallas yesterday than it was in Juneau, Alaska. It, crazy. That's like, crazy, right? Crazy. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. People are gonna say, "Look, that's global warming for you." There's their president, blah blah blah. Okay, whatever. I mean, crazy. No dinosaurs either, right? So I mean, things happen in our culture, in our world that just sometimes can't be explained. I don't want to go down that trail, but there's a lot of stuff that happens that could be bad. In the meantime, when bad stuff happens, do you just quit? Or do you go get it? And that's what Chip Baker is all about. We go get it. So, Chip, why don't you say hello to everybody this morning for those that don't know you and kind of give us a brief overview of who you are and what you do and, and uh, what we're here to talk about today. Yes, sir. So myself, uh, Chip Baker, I'm a fourth generation educator, teacher and former coach. I've been blessed and fortunate to be raised by some amazing people and be around some great people to learn from uh, in my life and my career. And I started the Success Chronicles a little over four years ago. And basically what it is, is it's my YouTube channel and podcast where I interview people from all walks of life. And I just share their stories for positive inspiration and motivation. And the journey has been amazing. Um, you know, when I started, I just started it to, like I said, show appreciation for those great people and tell their stories because, you know, I always had great conversations with them and they inspired and motivated me, and I just couldn't keep it to myself, right? It was so good. I had to share it with the world. And, and, and little did I know, um, <clears throat> I would cross paths with some amazing people and uh, get to learn from them. And uh, we share our stories together to inspire and motivate others. And that brings us to where we are today, um, you know, dropping uh, the compilation book, The Impact of Influence. And it's, um, you know, 16, 17 powerful authors, influencers who've discovered their path to success. And basically what we're doing in the book is, I mean, every guy in this book is, is amazing and powerful, right? They're achieving great things and making a positive difference in our world. And uh, I'm blessed and fortunate to know all of them and get to really hang out with these guys, right? That's crazy to have that much influence, right? Oh. Just, you know, to have that much around you and be like, holy smokes, like how can you not succeed or do well or be accountable in situations in your life when you've got that kind of stuff around you? Oh man, it, it blows me away uh, when I reflect. Um, it just it makes me be very grateful and and humble for for the um, the, the blessings that the big man has given me. You know, and there's a quote uh, that I use in one of my books. It says, uh, "Life moves at the speed of our relationships." Right, and so man, I can I can truly say that I'm rich in relationships, and I'm truly grateful for that um, because. It's allowed me to connect. It's allowed me to, to help me make a positive difference in the world. Uh, it's allowed me to be in alignment with my assignment and be on fire with what I do, right? And so yeah, man. I'm, I'm just so, so thankful for it all. Oh, that's so good. And, you know, I, I know that there's folks in the world that talk about um, feeling alone, isolation. There's a lot of that that's been going on. And, um, you know, I know personally from some of my communications with folks that, 
that feel like, you know, I, what's the point? I mean, it just seems like I can't, I can't win. Uh, other people are doing so well, yet I keep pressing and nothing's happening. Um, I totally understand those feelings and those situations where you're like, oh my gosh, right? So what do you feel about that um, accountability in your life? Um, how does that help Chip? Because obviously Chip doesn't have a chipper day every day, right? Yeah. So how do you how do you keep that going? Is it that, uh, because when you have accountability in your life, you have to be willing to let them in. And there's times when you have 17 people in your life, but if you don't, if you don't text them, call them, get on them, whatever, then forget it, right? Yeah. So how do you set yourself up for that accountability to stay getting it? I mean, you live in a situation with your, your life as teacher, uh, coach, you work with special needs kids, and uh, of course, family, father, husband, all these all these things that happen in your life, not to mention, you know, doing shows and writing books and, you know, saving the world, whatever, all the kind of stuff that you do. So how do you stay in a position yourself to be an impactor, an influencer, when life just sucks for Chip? Well, I think there's there's three things that we we can, um, you know, that come to mind when you say that. I think first off is assumptions. You know, we don't want to assume things, but I think if you want to, if you if we can assume something, we can assume that we're all broken, right? You know, yeah. I think we can assume that none of us are perfect. Um, you know, we all make mistakes. We're all just doing the best uh, that we can with what we have. I think that's the first thing. And the second thing is we need to understand that we are all a one of one. Like there's no other Matt Crump, right? There's no other Chip Baker in the world. There's no other Derek Pearson. They're on. They're my authors. Chris Holmes, uh, you know, Anthony McCauley, David Chin, Charles Woods. You know, there's no other one of the we're, – we're all a one of one. And when we realize that is like the big man made us in it like he wanted us to be. So we are enough, I think. And that's what we have to be reminded of is like we don't have to search for something else. Like we, it's it's within us. We just have to pull it out. Right. So we're a one on one. And then the, the other thing is we have to understand. And I'm glad you said this, too, about, you know, you I wear many hats. And I'm doing many things and I'm taking on. Well, what we have to understand is it ain't about you, right? And we have to get over ourselves and know that, like, yeah, I'm grateful for all of those things. Like, yes, I'm a you know, father, husband, follower of Christ, teacher, coach, success. Yeah, I do all of those things, but I'm able to do those things because I realize that, man, like, it's people depending on me. All of those people that I just listed are, are counting on me, right? So I can't have a bad day, like, I mean, mm. you know, of course, you know, there's going to be some tough days, but like I got people, it ain't about chill. Like I have people depending on me. Right. So it's a positive, it's a positive weight in that sense. Yeah. So it's a, it's a weighty place. You allow yourself to be weighted, which is an accountability for yourself. Yeah. One of the things that I did a long time ago was I realized that I was having a horrible time in my morning devotions, that I was not being faithful. Mm. Um, not that I wasn't being faithful to God. Well, I guess I wasn't being faithful to the Lord. Um, I just allowed other things to happen and I no longer did it anymore. Um, so what I started doing was I posted a daily devotion online every day. I got a scripture and a thought process and I posted it every day. And um, I did it for about three years like that. And if there was one day that I did not post this devotion, I would have my message box blow up. People like, hey, what happened? I didn't see your devotion this morning. Or, you know, well, you did the thing five weeks ago and it was so awesome. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, man. So I I had to, what people didn't know back then was I was so bad and so lazy about something myself. I did something to force myself to do it because I knew I needed to. And then the accountability came from other people. So it was that positive weight weightiness of something that if I didn't do this thing, somebody's going to notice, right? And that's it. You know, a lot of times uh, what we have to do is uh, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? Yeah. And push ourselves just like you did. I'll just tell you too, like before I started the Success Chronicles, I had gone through some really tough things in my life as well. And really, you know, when I started the Success Chronicles was kind of my therapy, you know, because I was getting to talk to people, you know, how'd you get through this? How did you do this? 
and it was helping me, but but more so, like I said, getting over myself, I was sharing that with the world because there's so many people in the world that have gone through or are going through some of those tough things that I had experienced as well. Yeah. And so um, while growing and grinding, uh, you know, we were able to share our stories, your journey, the same with you, you know, for other people. And, you know, I can just honestly tell you, you know, just like you said, with the devotion in following your story and knowing your journey, like I'm telling myself, bro, like you got to get up and get moving. Like you see that guy <laughs> doing it, like, you know, no excuses, you know? And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what it's all about. It surely is. We've been talking about accountability, talking about some influence in our lives. So uh, with that, I want to uh, have an opportunity to bring on some folks here in just a moment that are are really a part of your life and what we're here to talk about. And yeah. just before I bring them on, uh, the reason why we're really doing today's broadcast is to talk about this new book you, you've alluded to and I have as well called uh, The Impact of Influence. So we've kind of skirted around that a little bit. Can you just give me a, a good 30, 60 second shot as to what uh, what this book is, why it is and uh, and what its purpose will be? Yeah, the impact of influence, using your impact to create a life of influence. You know, it's a book that's really overflowing with with wisdom from uh, 17 powerful uh, in men that are that are influencers uh, mm -hmm. doing their thing. Uh, basically, what they do is they tell uh, their story of something or someone that has positively influenced their life, the lessons that they've learned from that and then how they're using those lessons to be a blessing to our world today. And so just amazing men. And, you know, I joke you know, every time I talk about it, I can't stop saying the word powerful. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so like when you get to hear these guys speak, when you get to read their stories, when you get to go follow them and see what they do, you will be saying powerful a lot as well because they're, they're amazing men. Yeah, man. I need to pull this screen off here. I didn't realize it popped up right away, but I wanted to, to show that, uh, well, where'd it go here? We're live. We're live. We're live. Oh, yeah. little... All good. Oh, here it is. There it is. All right. So that's uh, a little bit about the book right there. You know, a compilation of stories, how impactors have been influenced and are using that experience to influence the world in a positive way. So yes, yeah, super, super excited about that. And um, well, let's see, we'll start bringing in some folks here right now because we got we've got a party in the house. And uh, there's a few folks here that we've got. So why don't you uh, introduce everybody to us this morning, Chip? Yeah. So um, first, I want to say, man, guys look amazing. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But, I forgot. Uh, Hang on a second. Oh, now, now oh, we're man. ready. Now we're ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> to the side, too, right? Yeah, right there. Yeah. I feel like Chris over there. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have my guy, Mr. Anthony McCauley. Uh, we have Charles Woods there. Uh, he's in Houston with us, so he's having some tech issues with the whole whatever, you know, we're dealing with the weather down here. Um, Derek Pearson, Coach DP, and uh, and Chris Holmes. And and like I said, just amazing men, and I'm truly grateful that the big man has allowed me to uh, cross paths uh, with these guys. They've been a true blessing to me, and uh, I'm just so excited that we can work together to share the positive light on the world. And so... And I, I can't wait for us to get out there with the tour uh, and speaking engagements and, uh, you know, training, you know, doing all of those kind of things. And so it's really looking forward to that. But I love to have those guys talk about their themselves, their stories and where you can go follow them and check them out. Yeah, that sounds great. Why don't we start with you, brother? We'll start with you, Anthony, and we'll move our way around the room uh, for each person to introduce themselves individually. So go ahead, Anthony. Okay, I'm Anthony McCauley, guys. It's such a pleasure and a blessing to be among you, uh, such powerful, as Chip would say, uh, mm -hmm. men. And uh, I'm from Thomasville, North Carolina. Thomasville, North Carolina is, is used to be Thomasville Furniture, the furniture capital. And uh, the blue collar raised our family. But uh, this is my sixth book. And, uh, man, I'm, and this is the third collaboration I've done with authors from around the United States. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Males of Distinction, Ladies of Merit Youth Program here in Moore County. Uh, Males is making achievable life enhancing strides. I tell my kids is distinct to be set apart. I deal with uh, kids from the ages of eight to 17 years old. They call them at risk. I call them at purpose. They just mm -hmm. don't know no better. So um, I've written some my personal story that uh, I put inside of the impact of influence I had to get out of the way because when, like Chip said, it's not about me. 
Uh, I dealt with some addictive behaviors, came from a great family, blew, uh, uh, blew my knees out in high school and football, was on my way to doing some great things, but took those resentments and turned them into a party lifestyle of uh, being on the streets. But also working a lot of blue collar work and white collar work and being in board meetings, a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type syndrome. Mm -hmm. So the first line in my book says, I have been resuscitated two times. So I have came from overdose to CEO. And mm -hmm. I used to be ashamed of my story, but I used that impact of influence to put inside of, of this compilation. So that's me. You can find me on uh, uh, Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Just type in my name. I used to didn't want you to Google me, but I don't have a problem with anybody Googling my name now because I don't live like I, I don't look like what I've been through. I lost <laughs> I lost my wife six months ago. Oh. I'm a co I'm a COVID survivor, and uh, uh, my life has changed. We're going to talk about impact. Uh, and I have I run impact. It's, it was amazing when Chip uh, brought this to me and said, "Man, would you like to be?" And I was like, "Wow." because I run impact groups in local schools here and the impact acronym chip knows I love acronyms. Come so on. my impact groups in my schools are I'm making positive action changes today. So it was divine that I got a call to be a part of the impact of influence. And uh, Matt, I'm, I'm also a minister as well. And I can keep going. So I'm going to stop right there. And uh, <laughs> all I can say is, God, is this your first, is this your first closing <laughs> yeah, this is the first one. This is the first one. <laughs> this is the first one. <laughs> and, and look, you guys can also look up the website, malesofdistinction.com. And uh, it's, it, like I said, I'm, I'm, a may, I'm, I'm just grateful. Yeah. yeah, we're grateful for you too, brother. What an amazing, amazing life. And people think that they have to be superstars to be successful and to make an impact. And here's Anthony making an impact in people's lives that they'll never forget. And some folks in in, uh, in Melbourne, Australia have no idea who Anthony is, but it doesn't make a difference because you're making a difference, right? So you don't have to have that kind of popularity to, to be a, a person of influence or impact, right? It's not all about people knowing you. It's about what, what we get to do for other people. And that's what Come you're on, doing, brother. Thank, Thank you, you so man. much. So, Charles, are you there this morning? You got your mic on? Yes, sir. I'm here. Awesome, brother. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're probably the best looking guy in the house. And because you're such a humble man, you've allowed your mic, your, your camera to be off. So we look better than you. Thank you for that this morning. <laughs> no, I really saw you guys and I said, I'm not turning my camera on. Look at all these, young, <laughs> these gentlemen dressed to impress. Yeah, we know you only got three teeth, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. My name is Charles Woods. Um, I was born in Dallas, Texas, raised in Conroe, Texas. I've had the privilege to work personally with uh, Chip Baker. Uh, we formed a, a tight bond and relationship through uh, working together. Chip has probably been what? How long we worked together? Probably six, seven years. Yep. We worked on, in the same building. Um, we both... Um, had the privilege of helping our, our, our children that were receiving special services. Uh, we both were co-teachers in the classroom, helping them out, both coaches, football coaches. And uh, I was a track coach um, at Conroe High School as well. Um, now I'm a, um, a building principal. I am have the privilege of working in a great district, Klein uh, ISD in, in, in Texas, right there outside of Houston. Uh, been a principal on the campus for four years now. Um, I get to, this was great. You know, Chip brought this up, Impact of Influence. And I think through everything that we've done in education, everything that we do every day, we impact our young scholars every day. So uh, yes, this this is right on on time, man. And I, and I speak about a little bit in my book about, in my piece in the book about uh, surrounding yourself with good people, man. Just a good group of people. And it's so important. Uh, I, I talk to my young men and women every day, uh, even if you are in a group where we have some people that are, that are trying to make these decisions of life, these good decisions in life. Why don't you be the positive influence to those uh, young men and women? Uh, because really and truly, there is no just perfect group of people. It's about helping each other through. Um, I, I, I love this type of thing. I love positive energy. I don't live in the negative. 
that's no place for me. There's no sense of it. You know, sometimes people look at me, Mr. Woods, why are you so positive all the time? Why not be? Why not be? What you, you waiting know? for? What you waiting for, baby? Why not be? So uh, I'm just excited to be a part of this, and get to meet some some new gentlemen and, and build these relationships and bond in life and, and just keep moving, man. All about achieving. That's what we do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, my brother. All right, we got next up on the uh, on the sl slide here this morning is uh, somebody called Mr. DP, Mr. Derek Pearson, and uh, he looks like he's pretty an amazing, amazing guy. Unfortunately, he can't speak, so we're gonna have to move on to Chris. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Right. I gotta, I gotta shake it up a little bit. Good morning, brother. Welcome. Oh, to the show. <laughs> let's let's buckle up. Um, <laughs> Let's buckle it up. I'm dressing. Y'all dress for, for, for to impress. I'm dressed for radio. <laughs> so that's <laughs> you got a face radio, right? That's, I think Charles has the face for radio this yeah, morning. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to get it. Um, to 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 tell you folks how grateful and blessed I am to be in the, be in this space with you. First of all, I am uh, the son of a queen. I did not find that out until later in life. But mm -hmm. when you find out that you are actually the son of a queen, that my mother's born name was Queen Elizabeth. And I didn't find that out until I was 55 years old when I was trying to find out who my actual DNA father was. And in that journey, along the way, what happened? A kid born in Arlington, Virginia, just outside of D.C., right? So you, you, you think you know what you know. Life has picked me up and planted me in places to carry seeds. Um, I, I coached at John Cooper School right there in the Woodlands, Texas. Uh, I, I, I did television in Charlotte, North Carolina. Did radio in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, represented the Washington Redskins for, for quite a bit uh, when I was in D.C. But I've constantly been picked up by the universe and placed in places so that my seeds and my journey is shared and told. I have had the responsibility and blessing to help elevate. And, and, and I pay attention to these two words. P folks want to call them student athletes. I call them scholar athletes because I expect a higher standard and the folks that work with me. And so I created a craft from a pool of coaches that I've worked with that we developed this study program that allowed my, my student athletes, and I coached three sports, football, baseball, basketball. And in those three sports, no matter where I was, Utah, Charlotte, DC, Texas, that 78% of my, student, my, my scholar athletes, my student athletes achieved a 3.5 GPA or higher. We also, by, 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 by some coincidence, we also managed to win 78% of our games. That's mm -hmm. in three sports in four cities. That is not that is not a coincidence. That is an actual thing. And here's what all happened and how the universe worked with me. It treats me. Three years ago, uh, for all the for the decades of wear and tear from coaching, I had a uh, I had to have a, a, a spinal fusion because uh, I just put in too much work. In that fusion, they punctured me, and I woke up uh, with 27 blood clots. I had 20 in my legs, three in my heart, four in my lungs. Uh, the chaplain sitting on my bedside, right? Uh, I was told, look, we don't have anybody that beat this. So what do you do? And I used to say, I've lived a complete, complete life. Like if I used to say before age 50, hey, if, if God took me today, I've lived 100 lives and I'm good with it. Except on that day, on that day, I woke up and said, God, give me one more day. And every day from that, I asked for one more day. And every and I couldn't be a liar about it, that if I said, give me one more day, and he gives me a day, every day. You talked about that earlier, about how do you handle your bad days. Oh, no, I can't have no bad days. You know why? Because no. each one was given to me as a blessing and a gift, and I better do no. something with it. Mm. So I after that, that survival, I found out who my father was. I found out my, 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 my real name. I found my people. See, if I had gone, if I had crossed over that day, I would have never met y'all. I would have never been a part of this. I would have never been able to, to meet my real family. I've never missed, been had the opportunity to develop this thing. That I, I, I created this foundation called Love Prince. And Love Prince is simply this, that each day, we as men, we as adults, we as teachers, educators, parents, 
It is our sole mission and purpose to cover the people around us that matter to us so much in love that nothing else can stick. See, if I love my kids and your kids and you, you know, we got a principal in the room and he understands that when he hugs a child in his in, in the hallway, that love that he put on them walks with them into the classroom. It walks with them home. It walks with, as coaches. When you love on your players, that love that you put on them carries them home and they get to carry that and put it in the house. And your significant other, when you love them and they love us so much, when that other thing shows up and that other thing will, that you are so covered in love that it just slides off your back. When people say brush it, brush it, brush it off your shoulder. That's what this is. So I, through this journey of mine, look, I am so blessed and so honored and so humble because in this room, I'm sitting here with six. I'm supposed to love all six of y'all. That's my job. See, I'm going to plant the seed. It's my job to love you. I tell people all the time this very simple thing, and Chip understands it. Mm. I, I find the biggest, baddest person in the room, and I walk up on them, and I stalk, and I get in silverback mode, and then I say, you know what? My smile is undefeated. So is yours. Use it to be your pathway, because that's your calling card. See, that's your real business card. When you walk up and you give somebody a smile on your hand and you give them a hug and you touch up and you pound a little bit, that lets them know, look, I just covered you in love and you can't get away with it. And that's the stories that we tell and why we do what we do. Look, it's my job to love. Love Prince is a heart and a hand. The heart is love. The hand is action. Love requires action. Action requires love. Love by itself is wonderful but it doesn't accomplish anything. Action without love doesn't accomplish anything good. But when you put love and action together, we, not me, not you, we can accomplish anything. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm looking for, let me find a plate. Man, we, you need to, look, find, we need to take up an offering, man. We got to pass the plate right now. I'm looking for it. I'm, I'm right back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I had to uh had to look at the I mean I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. So I mean, I knew. I was just waiting for everybody else to see, right? I had to look at the pocket square, right? And look I at that boy and throw it at him. Paul <laughs> <laughs> Irving wants to know which one of us is not equally dressed from the waist down. Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> got, your short, got your shorts on this morning, Dan. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I think we got David trying to get back on, Matt. So as we're going along, okay. we want to just look out for that. Uh, yeah. Raise that. <laughs> and then uh, while that's happening, Chris, why don't you say hello and introduce yourself to folks? Who after that, man, that's kind of strong come after that. You know, David just set the stage, so I better come and bring it or go get it. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm going to go off your strong energy momentum and say, like, I think I'm going to start this my new saying, every day is great when you start off with a smile. And I want oh, people yeah. to remember that. So, <laughs> you already look. Let's you go. Energy, so I had to go ahead and keep carrying that energy. So I Let's just want to start off and say, like, it's a pleasure being on your show, Matt. And I want to um, begin off of Chip has given me so many different opportunities from traveling. Uh, we've been knowing each other for a good minute, and uh, on the show, like I actually met Chip from my previous basketball coach, Coach Carlson, and it's funny how life turns around. And like throughout my journey throughout high school, and then when I became an adult, I meet up with Coach Carlson, have a nice little lunch, and it's funny how like when you carry yourself a certain way, people can see things that's in you. And he said, like I think I know someone that you need to connect to, and uh, that person was no other than Chip himself. And ever since then, we have been go getting it ever since traveling to different locations has been a pleasure and much more. So I just want to give my Ivy out of praise on that. So now I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Chris Holmes, born uh, in Conroe, but my most residence is Huntsville, Texas, also known with the Bearcats of Sam Houston State University, podcast host of Next Level Thinking, um, author of was well, five, but thanks to the uh, co-authors of this new project, I will go ahead and say this is a sixth one and speaker and so much more. And I have my production company, Soul Production, which provides photography, video, audio, and much more, where the, the main thing is to help you capture your dream or make your dream a reality. So there is no limitation to where you should go and we're gonna help you carry that along the way. So what my chapter is mainly about is knowing that you are basically the answer to everything. 
and that has been my whole story throughout my whole uh, journey is through our high school and much more we are influenced by so many things from Martin Luther King, Michael Jordan, all that and much more. Uh, I got so in touch with other people's influence that and the trickle of things and I'm pretty sure other people relate to this, you forgot the value of yourself. And so you are so much uh, trying to be inspired by other people, which is great, but you forget that you yourself is the answer along the way. And throughout my journey through high school, especially through college, that's when I really started to wake up and notice that there is value. There is a purpose in your life. And everybody on here on this uh, call and all throughout the world has a purpose in their life. And it's time for you to wake up and realize that with a smile. So as I continue, I will learn more photography and video, networking with great people and just collaborating with people throughout college and those uh, other great things and knowing that you are the answer. So with that, I just want to go even further, that even through the pandemic, you know, the crazy weather in Texas and much more, we're going to face challenges. But you got to remember that all of this is just the mold you that get you even stronger because you may not be able to control the uncircumcised uh, situations, but you can control your, how you uh, react to it. So everything, even though you go through challenges throughout your life, you got to approach it with a smile and always remember that you are great and you can achieve even more and that we're all kings and queens in this. You are the greatest, even Muhammad Ali believed he was the greatest before the time has come, and you should do that as well. So we all have purposes, we all have great treasures. So let's go ahead and manifest them to greatness and let's go get it. That's good, bro, that's so awesome. Thank you for that. And uh, man, it's so true about the smile. It's pretty hard to, uh, it's pretty hard to be angry when there's a smile. It's possible, but it's pretty hard, you know? It's like people that come up and play a little ukulele. I mean, you can't just sit there and watch somebody like, I mean, it makes you smile. We see somebody like ukulele. It's kind of crazy, right? You brought up Muhammad Ali. I just heard uh, Tony Evans. Man, I love Tony Evans. He's like my spiritual dad. I uh, just can't get enough of Tony Evans. But uh, he said this morning, Muhammad Ali was on the airplane. You brought up Muhammad Ali, right? And uh, they were getting ready to take off. And everybody put on your seatbelts. We're getting ready to take off. And Muhammad Ali, I'm putting my seatbelt on. He's not putting a seatbelt on. So, so the stewardess comes by and says, Summer, sorry, sir, you need to put on your, your seatbelt. He says, uh, he said, no. Nah. He said, I'm Superman. Superman don't need no seatbelt. <laughs> he said, I don't see Superman on the plane, so put on your seatbelt. <laughs> so he had to put on his belt. So sometimes in life, it's important to be able to uh, to make sure we are willing to be humble enough to listen to other people and know that uh, it's not always about us, it's about others. And uh, that's what we're here talking about today. Uh, Chip, I did send you a message. I don't, I don't see uh, okay. David here in the room at all. So he might want to try to log back in if he can. If he can. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to, uh, to um, well, let me do this while Chip's going to be probably texting David right there. So, Anthony, if you can tell me um, in your introduction side of the sermon, if you can tell me a little bit about your chapter uh, in the book. Okay, I sure can. And I used to be ashamed of where I come from until I recognized that it wasn't about me. My journey had to become spiritual. It doesn't mean, and we, you talked about it earlier, it doesn't mean that every day is chipper. Uh, there are days when I have to, I can't stay inside of my head long. Now, I have no idea why my testimony had to be one of addictive behaviors dealing with drugs and alcohol, specifically crack cocaine. Mm. There it is. And my my chapter that I chose, and, and I, it wasn't it wasn't hard for me to pick out what I was gonna write about. I have to talk about what I've been through and where I've come from. And and I talk about um, just some things of, of I walked in dealing with the behaviors of street life and also being intelligent enough to have book smarts and street smarts. That's why I'm able, God has given me the ability to be able to go in the boardroom and talk to Joe CEO or be able to go on the street and, and talk to my boys out on the corner. And like you said, like I walk up on them, like DP said, with a smile. And uh, most of the time they think you're up to something, but God has given me the creative ability to break the ice in some arenas of my life. And it's all because I have a watchful eye of being who I am. And I used, like I said, it was, it, at first I was, why God, am I got to talk about this part of my life again? 
And it's, it's the impact of influence. And the impact of influence is letting you know it. Anytime, if you get a moment of clarity in your life and you're dealing with addictive behaviors, look at me. I can influence you and let you know that if I made it out, and I came, I was dealing with this in the 1980s when the epidemic of crack cocaine hit the United States. I was a part of that because I, I broke my leg, got uh, targeted in high school, and on my way to college, I was college football, college, uh, I mean, football, basketball, track. I got hurt. Nobody wanted to look at me after that. So I'm like, okay, I got a taste of something that made me say, whoa, what in the world? My brain was going into areas that be led to addictive behaviors. So my part of my book is talking about some things that I've overcome dealing with that and how I overcome it and why I sit and do and give back, freely give away my sobriety to others to help them get to a point where you can shape up. Yeah, that's so good, brother. That's amazing. I too been down that same path in the eighties with crack cocaine, when it, that new thing that came out and uh, golly, that stuff was a mess. You know, uh, I'm, I know what it felt like. I, I remember digging through, through the carpet, looking for grains of sand. I was smoking salt granules thinking it would be, I didn't care. I was free basing back then, you know, but golly, Ned's surely understand. Um, and it, it was a dangerous monster. Of course, we got stuff like meth and things like that today. I'm, I hate that we did what we did, but I'm glad there was no meth. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I probably would have done it. Um, but man, you've been through it. And uh, just because you've overcome it doesn't mean that you don't know what it was like and how to get to the other side. You know, folks say, well, you have no idea what I'm going through. I mean, that was for you back in 1985. What do you think that means for me in 2021? A lot. I mean, you're still here, right? So that's the benefit of the book. That's the benefit of uh, some of our, our white hairs that we share here for some of us that have hair anyway. I think that we got a couple of folks here. Yeah. <laughs> but there's such great value there, such great value. And uh, I want to go ahead and give a chance for for Charles, if you can, uh, and David, you are in the room, I'll give you, I'll pull you up here to the screen as well. Um, I want to be able to give Charles a chance to share a little bit about his chapter as well. So Charles, can you go ahead and do that? All right. Um, and my chapter, like I, I, I spoke about, is um, the influence of a, a good, positive group of a young man. Um, me, I was lucky enough to grow up with that good, positive group. Um, one of my friends, we were friends since kindergarten. A um, couple other ones I met in junior high school and we, we created a, a strong bond, which we really needed back then um, growing up in Conroe. Uh, those guys were most of those guys had just mothers at home. They were single moms at home, taking care of them, doing the best that they could with um, young men. Um, myself, I had parents, but they were, you know, I heard you guys speak about as you know, 80s, how that crack cocaine came out. I had parents, both of my parents, but they both had an addiction problem, you know, so those are things that I dealt with. Um, and just, just in my chapter talked about how we helped each other through, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. Wouldn't, have had a chance to, you know, uh, earn a scholarship to play college football, same university to get a master's degree as a graduate assistant football coach, you know, been lucky enough to get certified and, and, and teach and then certified as a principal. I wouldn't be anywhere where I was today if we didn't have each other. Uh, mm -hmm. We kept each other on that path. You know, if somebody was doing wrong, we're going to speak up in the group. We're going to love on each other. We're going to take care of each other. We're going to cry with each other. We're going to hold each other accountable. So, um, my portion of the book was just speaking on those guys, you know, not saying names or anything like that. You know, chapter wouldn't wouldn't do them uh, a right. You know, that's that's something later on down the line, possibly Chip Baker. When we talk about writing books, you know, um, that's something later on down the line. But, man, and just having a good group of guys to, to look out to each other and take care of each other through the uh, trials and tribulations of, of the worlds, the things that we go through, no matter what it is. Um, just staying positive and moving forward, man, it, it, it's a plus. And that's what my focus was and how it helps me today as a, as I am a building principal, you know, it helps, it helped me as an, as an educator, um, mm -hmm. as we are, you know, trying to raise scholars to get out there in that world and be good citizens and, uh, and get on the right path and, and do the best they can in life. So, um, that's really what my focus was on in the book. Um, I appreciate those guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, Charles. An amazing Matt, journey. Matt, to take. If, if you don't mind, can I uh, kind of elaborate a little bit on his deal? No. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, just like I said when we started, man, uh, powerful guys, and you know, Woods and I, we've been through some things together. You know, at the same time when we worked together, we both were going through some challenging times and kind of helped each other through those things. And I'm so grateful for him. But I, I don't know that he knows this, and I want to make sure I say this. Um, so we have another author that is in the book, and his name is <clears throat> Marquis Sneed. And Coach uh, Woods and I, we both coached Marquis Sneed, but in the book, Marquis tells a story about Woods. And I don't know if he knows that. <laughs> I it's don't. It's about him, the impact that he's made on his life. And so – I had had. I don't know. Did you know that Woods? I didn't. I I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So man, and, and that's that's the beauty of it. You know the the impact of influence, how we can impact people, and when we just do our things on a day to day basis, we don't really understand how much we're being an impact for others. So that's why it's so important. Just like you said, Matt. You asked me like, how do you do that every day? How do you get up and go get it every day? Mm -hmm. Well, when you when you understand it, it ain't about you. And know that you know you have the ability. Wait, me? Like, like mm -hmm. I have the ability every day to make a positive difference in the life of someone. Yes, like, like we all have the ability to do that. And so that's why it's important to make sure, like Coach DP said, it ain't no bad days. No, no right? Like, no, we can't. Have you? No, it ain't no bad days. I'm gonna fix my attitude. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna go grind. I'm gonna make it happen. And Woods and I, we have what we call devotion in the pool. <laughs> you know, yes, sir. You know, yes, we, sir. Oh, call. We have to be at work early. You know. Let me ask a question. Right Let me ask a question. Interject something there. I think it's important for people that will be listening. Anthony had mentioned a little while ago that he lost his wife six mm -hmm. months ago. Um, which I hate to hear. That's horrific. I can't imagine that feeling. I know some of it, but um, Chip, you just said there are no bad days. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, how did that day not be a bad day for you? Is that possible? Wow, man. That day floored me. And, and inside my mind, Someone like me and where I've come from could have been horrific as far as relapse and going back and picking up. But I stood on a whole lot of people that motivated me and loved on me. This community where I'm at here in Moore County, Pinehurst, North Carolina, they came and loved on me and checked on me. So it made it easier to the day, to date. They still do the same thing. I have some people in my life that I remove the mask. I don't have to hide behind anything. And it keeps me focused. The fact that I stand on different principles in my life has made it easier. That's mm -hmm. the only thing I can contribute it to. And uh, I have tried it Anthony's way. Mm -hmm. Had I been in my head that day, there's no way Chip would have contacted me. There's no way I would be sitting here because the next time and, and God forbid, I, I refuse to use the, because the next time I do with what's out there in the streets now, I'm not going to make it. So I stand on an impact of influence to change and share my story and remove the mask and, and, and be transparent about where I've come from and what I've been through. So it's, it's not a, re it's not a reflection of how I was raised. It's some of that weight we, we talked about earlier, that, that, that weight that you have in your life that that heaviness of companionship and knowing that there's somebody there, even when you feel like there is nobody there, you really know there is somebody there. And you've had, even when you don't want to talk to somebody, then all of a sudden Chip texts you or calls you and you're like, I don't want to talk to Chip. I don't want to, well, whatever, hello. And then something else, happened, right? So there's, there's, that, there's that ability, obviously we call it positive impact, positive influence, but I'm talking about that weight of, you allowed, Anthony, you had to allow that weight in your life because if you didn't allow that weight in your life, there would be another weight in your life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I just, you know, in him going through that, we were in communication. I did check on him. Yes. Sure he was good. And I'll just tell you, you know, even in that tough situation, like you said, you know, like he was able to look at the positive and say, 
hey, I got to keep fighting. He kept saying that, hey, I'm going to keep fighting because, you know, there's other people out there that have gone through and will go through what he is going through. And he can be the example, right? Like he is, I mean, he's the great example of a lot of things. And, and that's the power of, man, that's the impact of influence right there. Yeah, no doubt. That's so amazing. Well, thank you guys for that so much. Uh, DP, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about your, your chapter? Yeah, mine was, um, and, and Chip will tell you that as a coach and as a player, um, I say that often we are we are we're as powerful as the pool of our people, and we we have to have an understanding for we need a superhero whose cape we can ride on, and all of us need a superhero that looks like us. Like we need to know that superheroes look like us; they come from us. Um, we have two superheroes in our lives. The first one is our mom; she gives us that kind of love. That, that we're not going to find it anywhere else any other time. And the second one, the second one for me, I'm blessed. It came to my, in my house. See, there was a superhero in my house. He was my big brother. And one of the things that I coach from and I live from is this phrase, love out loud. Love out loud. And what we can't allow, what we too often do, is hold regret for not letting the people who loved us the most know that we love them the most and that we appreciate, right? The great regret is somebody, a child, a significant other, a coworker, look, man, I appreciate you, I love you. What you did for me is, 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 is beyond anything. And so in my house, there was a superhero and he not only showed me how to be a man because there was not a man present, but he showed me how to be a better human. And he was going out he was the track all America. He mm. turned out everybody and went and became uh, like an Olympic sprinter. Um, he would come home from these track meets and bring me shirts that I could wear around to say, look, man, I know where Indiana, I know where Ball State, I know where the pin relays are. I get to do that. And he's a man of faith. He runs his, his own church in Richmond, Virginia. But he, he, the things that he taught me when I was growing up, all of a sudden, when I became a coach and, a, and an educator, I was speaking in his voice. And he was impacting people that he was never going to meet. He was sharing, his wisdom was coming through me to them. And I had the, I had the opportunity to bring my brother along when I was coaching to meet my players. And in that room, he started to speak. And what they saw was, the superhero speaking to things that their little old coach had been telling them. And the light goes on that, oh, my goodness gracious, this is it. This is the pool. I now have a superhero to attach my cape to. And to what Anthony said, I lost, I lost my mom three years ago. And when you lose your queen after you found out who she was, it was my responsibility to get on the journey and find out more about my mother. And my brother enabled that. And we 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 spoke to my team. Now, I coached in a fluent area of Fairfax, Virginia, Woodson High School. These are rich white kids. There's no other way to put it. It's rich white kids. When my mom passed, I want to tell you the power and impact of influence. That those, when my mother passed on the day of her service at, at the black church in my black community, do you know each and every one of those white kids and their parents walked down that aisle to pay tribute to my queen on their own simply because they wanted to let me know, coach, you say love out loud. We cannot let you go through this pain by yourself. You are not alone. When your back is bent and the tears are falling, we got you. We got you. We got you. And that's the power of love out loud. That's the power of having a superhero in your house. That's the power of the nations and pools that we build. That's why we do what we do. And in this book, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to this because I know that your stories will become my stories. And ain't no none of us ever going to teach or lead alone again. It's never going to happen. We are all stronger right now than we've ever been in our entire existence because we're at the power of the pool of people that we are in. Yeah. 
Again, I don't know how many plates we're going to grab here today, but uh, <laughs> that's good stuff. Put it all brother. around. It's so good. And what a great, uh, great explanation of, of humanity and people. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is Black History Month. And, you know, I don't want to make this this show necessary about like I'm the white guy with a bunch of black guys on the show this morning because that's not what it is. But uh, it is an opportunity for us to to celebrate those that yeah. uh, that have that have gone before us, people that are fighting now. Um, there is no doubt there are differences. Um, there will always be differences. Let's just face the facts. It's never going to change that way. There's just we're broken people and stupid humans. And uh, we make some dumb mistakes. Um, it's a shame that we have to have in the sense of Black History Month at all, in the sense that, you know, why do we have to go through stuff like this and then say, oh, now we got to do something like that, right? Because we should be what you said, the love should make the difference. But we're in a broken world, right? Matt, let me let me give you, if you, if you don't mind. Yeah, go um, ahead. I, 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 because I was trying to find out who my father was mm. and who my mother was, I was trying to find out those things. And it took me down that ancestry dna pool right and then we say my angelou said this we are more alike than we're unalike my friend and this journey took me to this thing where i learned that for every human on the planet we share 99.9 percent .9 of the same dna we're the same book page for page no matter how we do it it's in the point one percent that we have the three million variances and that's how we work it but I also found out in this journey that one, this country is not only theirs, it's ours. Like I found out that I'm seventh cousins with both John Kennedy, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump. That, right, so, so, so Pete, this, to find out that my people built this country too, and that American history, like all those lessons I learned in class, they were talking about me. Yeah, so good. I did this TED talk, and it's you can find it to TEDx, but it's called American Face. And when we think of American faces, we do the thing that we're taught rather than the truth, which is we need to look in the phone. We look on this screen right here because these are American faces. We're the real store American story. Because in these faces are all the things that this country did, all the battles it fought, all the victories, and all the best. That's us. And the moment we accept that, nobody can talk about this country as if it's not ours. It mm. is. It's ours. And we, we hold ownership to that. We're more alike than we're unalike. And we need to stop telling the story that we're different. We're 99.9% .9 the same. That's yeah, that science, and you can't change it. No, that's really good, brother. Great explanation. And, you know, Man, obviously, you we've got a lot of folks that are, yeah, yeah there's just so money. many folks that aren't, aren't from America that are watching today. Yeah, definitely. Hang on, Chip. There's a lot of folks that, that aren't from America today watching. Yeah. And there are so many false narratives that are spoken about us in America across other nations. You see us from a different light that then really exists. Um, you know, it's not always bad. Uh, matter of fact, there's a whole lot of good. That happens. That's why I think this this opportunity today is is to express that. So I think it's a great opportunity for people that are are watching that are not from America to hear the heart what Derek just said. That speaks to the heart of what most Americans would feel, what most Americans are experiencing. Uh, it's just a different time that we're living in. It, it it's a really a tough time that we're living in, obviously. But um, you know we're we're not alone. So. Uh, Sorry, Chip. Go ahead, and jump in. Yeah, no, no worries. I, and I think this is a great segment to. So I want to get David Chen in so he can talk about his story uh, and share it because he's gonna have to get off here in a couple minutes for a meeting. But uh, man, this is prime example to what Coach DP was talking about. And David, go ahead and man, tell us who you are and share your story because like like they need to hear. <laughs> they I mean, need to hear it. <laughs> I mean, you you know, this is definitely the greatest country in the world. I mean, I was born in Taiwan. I came here when I was two years old. When I got to this amazing country, you know, I was homeless. We we're broke. We couldn't get on welfare. We overstayed our vacation time, as per se. I, I didn't even have my first house in, until I was 12. My first one until I was 15. You know, our, our, our kitchen table was a cardboard box. And, you know, coming to this great country, I, I think the most amazing part was you realize how blessed the people are here and how the differences shouldn't be that much of a difference because humanity should be the biggest difference, character the way you are as a human being. And I remember trying to learn the language and my parents trying to learn the language and trying to teach me it. 
And by third grade, it was done. There was no way they could help me out anymore because they just couldn't read English. I mean, that's just what it came down to. And, you know, now I can sit there and tell you that I was one of the youngest management partners at Deloitte. You know, I have a $46 billion company. I ran a $30 million division at 82% of the marketplace. You know, where else could you do that in this world? And, you know, and, and, and being one of the, the investors in FaZe Clan, a $320 million esports company, and, and, and having a news company now that is probably the largest esports news company in the world in 34 countries with 40 million viewers a month. And it all started with me being an immigrant coming here as a college dropout, <clears throat> not having a great relationship with my father, and, and, and being able to forgive and love him at 35. Those are the influences and changes. And along the way of my life, if it wasn't for good people, that had good character and positivity, like Chip, like the gentleman here, all the GQ looking gentlemen, I wouldn't have made it, you know? And and and, and for me, you know, it, it was one of those things where it wasn't just race that was an issue or language was an issue. It was the fact that I didn't know who I was. And, I can't, and I'm in El Paso, Texas. And now I have one of the biggest news networks in the world. I mean, that's the, 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 the influence of people, but you have to follow the right influences and the ones that care and know that your circle has to be real friends and real family, not just associates that are pretending to be what it is, and you'll be able to make it, right? And, and that's the reality of something that happens here. We're in a world now where all the education and all the technology and everything that you can imagine is sitting here on your phone and everyone else is bored. Oh, right? now I can't right? talk things that are there. So it's been an amazing process. And, and you know, I'm just grateful to be part of this book with these amazing gentlemen and, and, and hearing their stories. And it's just so impactful and allows us to be, continue to be grateful and, and, and check our egos and realize that the power perspective, the things that we still do have, the things that we, we, we've been blessed with are phenomenal. Man, alive, alive. I tell you what, David. Man. That, Man. Come on. Thinking, what, Come what, 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 by the way, let me do this one more time. This is, this is, he's, he's pretty good, right? So we need to, with David, um, oh, let me see how I can do this. Hang on. I was trying to get him back on the screen like that. Um, we're live. We're live. Oh, here we go. Bam. There he is. All right. So, David, you uh, I mean, you're not like 60 years old. So I think um, it wasn't that long ago that it was the cardboard table for for breakfast. And now it is uh, it, no longer a cardboard table. And uh, you've been able to have some some amazing success and opportunity in your life, um, which is amazing. And you're talking about some of the things you've come from in your past. So how do you, I mean, obviously it was very impactful as a young man, but how do you keep that forefront in what you're doing in your life right now um, to maintain that connection with, with kind of like, you know, I always tell people, it's like, you want to keep one, one arm in the past, holding things that are back, back there, some of those tight fisted things, right? But at the same time, reaching into the future, right? It's not like you're stuck in the past, but you want to hold those things in tension with one another. How's that? How's that work for you in your your life, David's life, and then your life as as the business guy, David, with with life? You know, well, first I'm 40, so that, that that's that's the first thing. And second thing is, is you know, hunger and humility. Once you're hungry, once you know that you have to eat bugs because your parents can't even afford chicken and they can't afford eggs. Mm. Once you know that you're different, you never want to go back to that. And it's about the perspective of life, right? If you remember where you came from, you'll be focused on where you're going and you appreciate the now. And if you think about the things that you were blessed with and everything's a blessing, the fact that we woke up this morning to be on the show is a blessing and things might not be going perfect, but no one's life is going perfect. There is no magic pill. There is no all of a sudden life is going to change. It's hard. Life is difficult and it's more difficult now than it's ever been. But humility and hunger is key because I'm hungry to help other people and let them know that you can look like me, you can look like Chip, you can look like anyone else in the world, look like Matt. But the reality is the character of the human being and the love and the compassion is what's going to make the positive things. So I stay hungry and I stay humble because I don't want to forget where I came from. But I want people to know that where I came from, despite what you look like, your economic backgrounds, you can make it. You know, and I'm in El Paso, Texas. And, and, and the reality is, we started a news station with an iPhone and a year and a half later, we're in 34 countries. I mean, it's the most unbelievable thing in this world. Do good and good will come back. And you mm -hmm. have to be fully good. You can't be just good in business and then cheat on your wife. You can't just be good in, 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 in life, but be terrible in business and, and be a shyster. 
You have to just be good all around. But I promise you, I can't even explain this influence. Things just happen. I am all of a sudden united with all these great human beings who all have their stories. And those are the blessings of life. That's so good, brother. It's so true. It's like I'm thinking right now of a psalm that says, uh, his grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And what that's what you're talking about is when you put yourself in that position, that weight we were talking about before, um, it's hard to, as you're moving forward, it's hard to look back if you're in position and not see grace and mercy. If you look back and don't see grace and mercy, right, that will follow me all the days of my life, then you're in the wrong position. One of the things I, I try to tell people, oh man, I'm getting my preach on now. One of the things I try to tell people is that as a, as a leader, and David, you, you'll, you'll appreciate this, I surely hope, that um, we should always look like a shepherd from the front and a sheep from the back. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that's such a true and powerful impact. And I think you can always learn no matter where you are, what you're doing, you know, I've learned so much of sitting here. You know, I've learned style. I've learned grace. I've learned perseverance. I've learned love. And that's just sitting here in the last 20, 30 minutes, right? But that's a reminder that this world isn't all bad. And we are the people that need to make it good. And all we got to do is change one person to pay it forward, and the world will be A-OK. -okay. That's yeah. all we have to do. So these are definitely the blessings. And, and I appreciate just being part of this. This, this is an amazing thing. Thank you, David. I appreciate that so much. And Charles, I sure hope you're listening, bro, about getting in style. You know, it's a pretty important thing to do. <laughs> I'm taking notes right now. Oh, it's fantastic. Maybe one day you switch on. We'll see. We'll see those three teams. All right. So <laughs> uh, I think that um, DP did. Yeah, you shared your your part. So Chris, can you share a little bit about your chapter? Yes, um, exactly. So like, I'm going off of your your energy, of course, David is. Um, there's so much that you can do. It's all about, I believe, perspective and keeping that positive view in your life because especially during these hard times, the pandemic and so much more, you're going to face a lot of different challenges. And if you approach it as in a negative perspective, you're going to make that a reality. So you got to remind yourself that you can overcome these things. You can be a great father. You can be a great mother. You can be a great leader. You can be a great communicator. You can do all these great things to be a great um, impact of other people to help them achieve the next level. So I believe that every person in this world is a uh, page in the book of life. And as we continue to do our part, we will impact others so they can do great things. Because you never know who may be watching. Even when you are going through your times of adversity and you don't think people are watching, people are still watching. And that's why it's very important that you do strive to do great things and take advantage of the opportunity. The fact that you woke up today is another grand opportunity. And you have to remember that. Because there is an, an honest truth, some people didn't wake up. But if you remember it, to take every day of your life with great opportunity to make a person's life that much better, to be a great influence, to make something stand out so big, like Martha Luther King's dream, that it leaves a legacy for other people to continue to inspire, to continue to chase their dreams and make it a reality. And that anything, if they put their mind to it, is very possible. You have made so much impact, not only into the state but the worldwide that you have like trended so much that it is just inspirational all around and that's what um, humanity should be all about inspiring others to be the greatest person that they can be and so that that legacy continue and then they can live their story mm -hmm. so good chris thank you i'm glad you brought up the word legacy i think that uh, that's one of the other words that gets abused today in social media i think it's turned into just uh, a marketing word and something that people like to sound good with you know but um, if people truly under understood legacy you know it's not about the fact that i'm going to have some kind of statue for myself afterwards and some some wing of a hospital named after me it's the fact that i i'm able to i'm able to to input and, and deposit things into other people's lives that that lives beyond me right i don't even i'm a songwriter i'm a singer songwriter right and you know one of my dreams used to be that i'm on stage i'm mr popular everybody knows matt crump and man that guy's awesome singing he got some great songs blah blah right but now i'm in the position of saying i would love to it's like that old song i want to write the songs that makes the whole world sing right so i want to be able to write a song that people love that they connect with that they're just so in touch with and they have no idea that i even wrote it 
It is no bad, right? But for them to have that and that thing that moves them forward, to me, I think success is, is making other people successful, you know? So, uh, Chip, we've been going well over an hour now. This has been so good. And, uh, you know, for the sake of people that are watching or listening, um, thank you folks so much for staying tuned with us. And maybe you want to chop some of this stuff into part. We'll probably have to chop it up in pieces later for those that are watching in replay. But uh, I think we've had a chance for everybody to uh, to chime in about their side of the book. Uh, so, Chip, if you kind of work towards wrapping us up here today, sure. speaking you know specifically into the book and um, how people can find this. Uh, you talked about you're going to start going around and sharing that with different people in different places, doing your uh, the Chip World Tour, right? So uh, you, know, you start that tour up in Pinehurst, up in the golf courses and the horse farms out there with our brother, right? So uh, if you can do that, brother, I sure would appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Well, again, I just want to say thanks so much uh, for giving us the opportunity, Matt, to come on uh, and, and be a part of your, your show. You know, grateful that you made an opportunity for us to, Come on and tell our story. I want to thank David. I know he had to be off and Coach DP has got to be off because he has a show as well. <clears throat> but I know he may be dipping. So I just want to, you know, acknowledge those guys. But the impact of influence, um, you know, as you have seen and heard powerful men, uh, you know, just great stories, transparent uh, stories, men that's doing great things. And I'm so grateful uh, uh, to be, you know, to have this thing come together. And so, yes, uh, we're, we're having a book launch, which is March 27th, but we're doing a virtual book launch. We'll do our, our, our bestseller run. So you know, I'll be getting you information about that so we can all, you know, have you guys get on. Um, we'll be doing, you know, big promo for the book. We'll be traveling May and June. Um, we'll be in uh, Dallas, Houston, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, El Paso, uh, Pinehurst, uh, will be in uh, North uh, Charlotte as well. So those are the six venues that we have so far and, and working on more, working on L.A., working on Atlanta, uh, working on Tampa, Florida as well. So those dates will be coming and we'll get that information to you as well. But truly excited uh, about the opportunity, the impact of influence. And, and I'm grateful uh, to that the big man has blessed me to cross paths with these great people. My hope is that you know we'll just continue to share our stories in hopes uh, that we make a positive impact on the world. So again, Matt, thank you so much for for, for having us. Uh, truly grateful, um, truly grateful for these men. And um, man, watch out. I can't wait for everybody to get that book in your hand. It's going to be like, it's going to be hot. Like for yeah, real, yeah. You're putting it, it's going to be hot. Like you, man, hot, hot. <laughs> when you yeah, say yeah. It, it's, it's, it, that's when it's real, right? That's hot. right. Yeah, yeah, it's H A W T. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, after, after, this, after this is over, where are we able to find this and share it on our? We're able to find this. The broadcast. Yes. Well, right, right now we're live on Facebook, LinkedIn, okay. uh, uh, and it'll be on YouTube as well. Uh, and there will be a replay on all those channels, right as well. So um, it's on my my personal profiles on all of those places. So uh, if you find Matt Crump on, uh, which I'm pretty easy to find, you find me on LinkedIn, uh, you'll find the today's broadcast as well as uh, Facebook. It's on my personal page and it's on my, uh, on our movement page, God's Got This Movement. It's on that page being broadcasted right now as well. So, um, you know, there's always going to be more people on the replay than on the lives. Uh, so there's a good chance for folks to come back here and and pause and write down some things. There's been some good golden nuggets. So, uh, you know, when you're watching, I would I would challenge everybody that's here because this is one of the worlds that we're living in right now is that it's so easy to be a consumer um, and, and not a producer. We constantly are consuming, right? It's this perfectionism thing. Like I've got to do better. I've got to be better. I've got to be better. And then you keep doing this consumption and you never produce anything. You're just too busy doing. You never get to, to do yourself what, what's in you. So, you know, Press the pause button from time to time. We said, oh, man, that's good. Write it down because it was probably good for a reason. If it stuck out to you, there's chances that uh, that God's trying to speak something to your heart and, and, you know, find out what that might be. So, uh, you know, take time, folks that are listening today to go through that and see what that might be. So, man, it's been it's been so, so good to have you here. And for those of the that have been uh, chiming in, Tanya Harper, she's been she's been saying all kinds of stuff today. She's up in here. She must be friends uh, with y'all here, but um, 
she's been very faithful uh, as well today. And uh, we'll we'll make sure that as the uh, replay is here and there'll be more comments coming in on the replay, uh, Chip and the guys and myself, we'll, we'll monitor those comments. And if there's a, a question you may have, if there are uh, needs you may you might be facing. There's been all kinds of circumstances and situations that have been presented here today, from from addictions uh, to uh, despair, from um, places that where there have been people who have felt like they have lacked, um, but they're really people of great purpose. Uh, you know, maybe that's you, and if that is you, uh, perhaps one of these faces here today, especially Charles, one of these faces here today may have really stuck out <laughs> I mean, Charles, talk about black history month charles <laughs> Blackout. there it is, oh, sh- you there it is. is. midnight That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i just want to say thank you so much to you all for for uh blessing me and honoring me, me with the opportunity to to host today and to for us to be able to get some of this word out i think it's been I don't think I mean it has been fantastic. It's been so much fun. And I hope people see also that, you know, it's easy just to hang out, right? So we just been hanging out today, hanging out with the folks there watching today for a great opportunity for an incredible book that's uh that's coming shortly here. The impact of influence, using your influence to create a life of impact, right? So not just impact, but using your influence, right? The influence isn't the fact that you're all that and a bag of chips. Uh, The influence is like right here. You see the influence? It's it's Chip, it's 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 Anthony, it's Charles, it's Derek, it's Chris, it's David, it's all these folks that are influential in each other's lives that empowers them to do what they do, right? I mean, we're here. We're the word says we get, that we can we can be a keeper, a help, a helpmate, a friend to our brothers, our sisters, and it's an opportunity for us to pour into the lives of other people, whether or not you get credit for it. It doesn't. It's, it's not about credit. You know, it's about success. Is making other people successful. It really is. Um, one of the things I love to say is givers get, and uh, I've learned sometimes the hard way that you can never outgive God. I mean, I'm telling you what, it comes down to the last ounce of whatever you got. And then somehow, some way, there's more. Oh, God, man. Wow. He's a God of more. He's a God of more. I promise you, there's more. There's more. There's more. So I hope that is something for somebody out there today. Uh, Chip, thank you again so much. If there's anything you'd like to say in in closing today... Our first yeah. closing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would ask that you would just follow all of the guys. You know, they talked about who they are, and, you know, and that's where you can go, you know, purchase the book you know, directly from them at their site. They have their, their online uh, store sites on their social media. Uh, you can go and purchase the book directly from them and get autographed copies um, and follow the amazing things that they're doing. And so, Again, Matt, just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. I uh, truly appreciate you. Uh, truly appreciate the men for taking the time to be on. And, and you viewers uh, and listeners, we appreciate you taking the time because we know your time is valuable and limited. And our hope is that you've gotten one thing that you can take and go make uh, an impact on the world with your influence. So go yeah. get it. Go, go, go get, get it. it. Go get it, baby. That's what I'm talking go about. Get it. Thank you so much for joining us here on another episode of Matt Chat Live special edition with my really good friend, my brother Chip Baker, and my my new brothers that I've got got a chance to meet. I'm so grateful to be connected. Um, the one thing I will say, folks, is that um, and, and to everybody that's here on on the panel, uh, if you can go back and find to th- this episode right now, and and input your contact information in the comments. You know, how they can find you if it's on Facebook, your Facebook profile or LinkedIn or wherever, you know, drop that in the comment section for some folks that may want to connect with you. That'd be fantastic. And I'll work on editing that a bit later. But um, there, everybody here is 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 worth more than gold. And I'm so grateful for everybody being here today. And for you all that have been watching, thank you, because that's what we do this for all of us. Um, we, it, we enjoy each other. We enjoy the things we get to hear from each other. But uh, honestly, if all we do is talk about to each other, then then we've wasted our time because this is really about you. This is about you. 
So it, you that are watching right now, you that are listening right now, uh, you have incredible value. Uh, you are worth it. No matter what you feel, don't believe that lie because it's a lie. I know what it feels like, but it's a lie. You have great, great value. Thank you for being here today. Another episode of Matt Chat Live. We'll see you again soon.